Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In today's lesson, I'm going to begin by asking you a question. Do you know why we have loose chains hanging behind Rory's carrying fuel? Or do you know why it's not advisable to comp your air close to a charging battery? Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss charges in air application and dangers of electrostatics. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson as we answer few questions which we interact with in a daily basis. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain charges in air and how air can be charged and then explain the applications of electrostatics and then finally describe the dangers of electrostatics. So air can be charged in many ways, but we are going to consider only two main ways. That is heating in what we call thermal ionization. And then we are going to consider radiation in a process we call radiation induced ionization. So in heating or in thermal ionization, remember air is a mixture of gases like oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases like noble gases. So these gases, like any other substance, they are made up of very small particles, which we call atoms. Now these atoms, they have a nuclear, and then they have energy levels. And above all, we have what we call the outermost energy level, which, we, which has electrons, which we call Fahrens electrons. Now, when you have your heat, when you heat or when you cause a flame here, when you heat these atoms, these electrons which are in the outermost energy level will gain kinetic energy. When particles gain kinetic energy, what we said from particular nature of matter is that their movement will increase. And if their movement increase, then it means they will gain enough energy to move out of this energy level and get lost. So some of the electrons will be lost when these particles gain energy. Now the electrons which will be lost, another atom will be heated, which has a high affinity all which needs are electrons when this electron is lost the other one will be able to gain it now when it gains it it becomes negatively charged the one which will lose will become positively charged and in this case we will say they have formed ions that's why we call it thermal ionization so another way of charging air is through radiation in what we call radiation induced ionization and radiation induced ionization we use rays like cosmic rays or radioactive rays in this case if you have particles of air here let's say this is the particle of air let's say oxygen and then in this case this atom has six electrons in the outermost energy level that is oxygen in this case if you have a radioactive substance here if you will have a radioactive substance here which is emitting a serious rays when these rays which have very high energy uh, like x-rays we have gamma rays and alpha rays so in this case when they hit the surface of these atoms these electrons which are in the outermost energy level will gain enough kinetic energy they will move more randomly and then they will move from the low energy level to high energy level in what we call they will be excited so they will move to the higher energy level and then when they interact with an atom which has high affinity of, of uh, electrons they will lose electrons to them so this one will become positive recharged the one which will lose electrons and then the one which will gain will become negatively charged so in this case you have ionized air or you have um, uh, charged air remember charging is a process of making a particle either positively or negatively in whichever way so in this case we are making the particles of air positively or negatively using heat or in what we call thermal ionization and we are going to cause uh, the particles of air positively or negatively in what we call radiation induced ionization using cosmic rays and radioactive decay so we have some of the applications of electrostatics and one of it is electrostatic precipitators. Electrostatic precipitators, these are devices which use the principle of electrostatics to remove particles such as dust and ash 
from exhaust gases emitted by industrial process and in power plants. If you are keen in your chemistry, you have discussed an industrial process which we call fractional distribution of liquefied air. And in this process, we said we collect air from the environment, but before we take it to removal of carbon four oxide, first we remove dust particles. The dust particles are removed either by filtration. However, filtration is not efficient, so we use what we call electrostatic precipitators. An electrostatic precipitator, you can see it on the screen. It has all the chimney of the of the industrial waste uh, release is fixed with two plates, metal plates, which are fixed with um, positive recharged collecting plate. This positive recharged collecting plate is the one which will attract all the ash and the dust particles, and then the gases which will re be released to the environment will be dust and ash free. And then the second application of electrostatic charges is in the electrostatic fingerprinting system, which is mostly used by forensic science or scientists to develop patent fingerprint left on crime scenes. If you com if someone commits a crime and they touch some uh, some places in the crime scene, these people or the forensic scientists will come with some machines which are fixed with electrostatic or we use as the principle of electrostatics, then they will detect those fingerprints, they will extract them, and then they will identify the people who are involved in that crime scene. The third application of electrostatic charges is in the electrostatic spray painting. And in this principle, or in this application, they apply the principle or the law of electrostatics, that is, unlike charges attract. So what they do, they make the paint to be positively charged, and then the surface which they want to paint, like the car part, to be negatively charged by scratching the surface of that part. You can see on the first diagram here. So what happens when the paint is positively charged? When they apply it to a surface which is negatively charged, there will be an electrostatic attraction where the paint will stick strongly to the surface which is being painted. So here, we also have another application of electrostatics, that is electrostatic photocopying. These photocopying machines are always in every office, and they, sometimes this, process, this is called serography, and they use the idea of electrostatics to make copies of the original document. So as much as we have great applications of electrostatic charges, like in electrostatic precipitators, electrostatic spray guns, and even photocopying machines, we also have some of the dangers of electrostatics. And one of it is lightning, which can cause shock to human beings, even sometimes causing death. Another danger is that the pipes which carry inflammable liquid, sometimes they explode because the liquid inside will be wrapping with the, or will cause friction with the walls of, the, of the, that pipe and in the process, static charges are produced. When they are produced and there are many, they cause sparks which make the inflammable liquid to explode. Sometimes the tankers which carry a fuel, they explode because as the vehicle is moving, the liquid which is inside will be scrapping the walls of the, of the tanker. And in the process, static charges are produced. And when these static charges are more, they cause sparks which cause the whole vehicle to explode, as you can see on the diagram on the screen. And now, because of this reason, remember also as the car or as the, this tanker is moving, the wheels are creating charges because of the friction between the parts of this vehicle. Those friction will be causing charges or electrons to be produced. And when these electrons are produced, if there are many, they can cause sparks. So to prevent that, these tankers have what we call conductive strips. Conductive strips, these are chains which are good conductors and they are always hanging behind the tankers which are carrying uh, fuels or inflammable uh, liquids. So the function of these chains is to channel excess electrons which are produced from friction into the ground so that they can be neutralized. So in the, that process, there will be no spark which will be produced 
and the tankers will be safe. So without these chains, the, these vehicles or these tankers which carry inflammable liquids are likely to explode end time. So the function of this one is to either allow electrons to move to the ground or allow electrons from the ground to move to the vehicle to neutralize any electrostatic charges produced as the vehicle is moving. And this also, we have, uh, or it's advisable that we don't comp our air close to, uh, close to a, a charging battery because charging batteries sometimes they produce gases which are flammable like hydrogen and oxygen. So if you pump your air, remember you are causing electrostatic charges. Those electrostatic charges can cause sparks, which will may make those gases produced by charging batteries to explode. And that's what we are going to look at in the next topic that is simple cell and circuit. We are going to see how charging batteries produce flammable uh, gases. So that marks the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic electrostatics, that is topic 9 of Form 1. Now we are remained with one topic of Form 1, that is simple cell and circuit. Until then, see you in the next lesson.